wouldn't presume to tell an Indian fighter his business, but a lot of Indians could be hiding up there. We may be inviting ambush. I'm not only inviting ambush, General, I'm praying for it. I've got 50 extra riflemen hidden under blankets in the wagon. To pieces. Fifty dead, a hundred wounded. Colonel Bernal killed. Five thousand pounds of corn. Every wagon, every gun, every mule. How'd Cochise know we had men hiding in the wagons? Seems to know everything that's going on out of town and right here in town. Who's his spy? Maybe I can tell you. Maybe a lot of us can. And who is it? Is Tom Jefferson here? Yeah, Milt, I'm here. Oh, I just wanted to tell you. One of your mail riders just came in. Fit as a fiddle. Thanks, Milt. Too bad all of us aren't personal friends of that murdering Cochise. And maybe my wife would still be alive. You ask me. That you took over, that mail run was fixed from the start. I got both hands on the bar. I'm keeping them there. I'm no good at gunplay. Don't worry, Mr. Cartwright. You got friends here. How was it fixed? Cochise doesn't do favors for nothing. He got something out of this. He had to, to let the mail riders go through. What did he get? What? You tell us. Whiskey? Guns? <laughs> Anybody want to use the word renegade? No, Tom, no. But I can't get even one load of store goods through. Now, how come Cochise is friendly only to you? Because he gave his word when I met him, and he keeps it. Oh. No Redskin's a man of honor. It's the first peace move in 10 years. You're all blind to it. We're not going to have peace till every Apache's hung from a tree. Now, let's all drink to it. Without me. I wouldn't drink with an Indian lover anyhow. Are we going to let him get away with it?
that I'm not grateful to you, but I won't scout for you, nor will I exterminate Indians for you or for anyone. I don't want your gratitude, Jeffords. I don't even want you to scout for me. What then? It's my hope you'll take me to see the Indian Cochise. You know him. I was told in Basilla Park, New Mexico, you could do it if any man could. After all, you were able to arrange for male riders to ride through unmolested. Oh, I know you're angry. You have every reason to be. I wish you'd sit down and hear me out. You apparently don't like army officers. Does this Bible prejudice you against me, too? Depends on how you read it. The Bible I read preaches brotherhood for all of God's children. What if the skins aren't white? Are they still God's children? My Bible says nothing about the color of a man's skin. It's a general that served under Grant. They called him the Christian general. I've also been known among my soldiers as a Bible-reading Howard. Why do you want to see Cochise? If I can, to make a peace treaty with him. Who sent you out here? President of the United States. With what power? Full power to make a fair treaty. To be changed by politicians or some Indian agent later? Any treaty I make will stand. I have the President's absolute word as to that. I warn you, General, I won't sell Cochise down the river. Why the sudden change of heart in Washington? Reports from here have been extremely disturbing. Washington is eager to make a fair peace with the Apaches. Then the Southwest can truly be opened up. What is a fair peace? Well, suppose you tell me. You know the Indians better than any man. Equality. The Apaches are free people. They have the right to stay free on their own lands. You mean the entire Southwest? No, even Cochise wouldn't ask that. But a clear territory that is Apache, ruled by Apaches, no soldiers on it. I'll agree to that, in principle. What else? The rest you can talk over with Cochise. You'll take me to see him then? Will you go alone without soldiers? If it's the best way. It's the only way. I'll go alone. Leave tomorrow to see Cochise. I'll be in touch with you. You think he'll agree to a peace? I don't know. We broke one peace with him and he doesn't forget. But he's an intelligent man and a big man. I don't know what he'll do, but I'll try and persuade him to see you. General, read your Bible some more. I like the way you read it. Your signals were seen. I bid you welcome. It is good to be back again. Walk with me, my brother. I'm glad you're back. My mind is troubled. I mourn for the dead warriors and friends and unborn children. It is of this I wish to speak. Cochise, oh, before you speak, hear me. I know that five days ago you defended my honor against your people. Your life was almost lost. You are my friend. I trust you. Now I listen. Cochise, you've just had a mighty victory. It is so. Yet your heart is heavy. You've heard the mourning of your women. How many more victories can you have before you're left without warriors? They took enemies with them. Who will kill your enemies tomorrow? The old women? What else is left to us? The Apache is coming to the end of his trail. I know it. For every white man we have killed, ten more have come with better guns and more guns. But what way is left to us except war? I bring a way now, a way we both have been seeking. Hear me well, so you will make no mistake when you talk. This is our land, ours. The Spaniards and the Mexicans tried to take it. Now the Americans say it is theirs. As though the earth could be traded back and forth like a horse. We will not be put on a reservation to be guarded by yellow stripes who hate us. 
We cannot live like that. Ortiz, an American general has come to Tucson to speak peace. Others have come before. I spit on their peace. This one comes differently. In what way? His tongue is straight. He says you will have your own lands without soldiers. You will make your own laws. The American general said this? He agreed to it. What land? Where? It is for you and him to decide. I had in mind the land here, where your people live now. You will agree to that? I think so. There is a trick in this. I would not speak of it if I thought so. Why has an honorable peace been offered the Apache when it was not offered the other tribes? Perhaps it is because the Apache has fought so long and so well. The general wants to see me. He wants to see you here. Here with soldiers? Alone. He is a man of faith. He believes that all people are children of God. So, it is something other whites have yet to learn. Where you see him? His peace. Will your white brothers keep it? They wonder the same about you. My word is my life. I do not break it. I know that, but they do not. But there will be no peace unless there is a will to try. I will think first. You have not been fighting the Americans for 10 years. It stands in the way of a quick decision about peace. If I make peace with this general, can a bigger general throw it away? No. He speaks for the chief of all of us. There is no one bigger. Then hear me. Go to Tucson. Look into the heart of this general. Look deeply. Do not bring him back unless you are sure of him. I will send out runners. Apaches from all tribes of the nation must come here must be a meeting of the minds. To talk peace is a big thing. It's our way too, Cochise. The democratic one. Good sleep, my brother. And that's about the way it all adds up, General. If Cochise likes your terms, they'll be discussed at the council. A decision will be reached. And suppose the council disagrees. I just don't like it, General. You'll be all alone up in that Apache stronghold, a lone white man in the enemy camp. I'm sorry, sir, but I am responsible for your safety. Oh, you're forgetting, Captain. Jefferson will be with me. But, General... Where? What, Captain Costa? Well, I just don't like it, sir. I don't think Cochise would come riding into our camp on his lonesome. With good reason, Captain. Seems to me there have been a few other Indians that have ridden into our forts under a flag of truce that didn't come out. We can't be held to account for the action of a few drunken troopers. And let's just say that Cochise's word is held sacred among all Apaches. General, I beg you, sir. It all boils down to just how badly you want this peace, General. All I can tell you is as long as Cochise feels it's an honorable one, we've got a fighting chance. Well, that's reasonable. That's all I expect. I still say it'd be suicide to ride up there alone. I appreciate your concern, Captain. And I'll thank you for an escort as far as the Apache lands. But you're to hold your men there until Jefferson and I return. Captain, just how much good do you think a group this size would do if Cotiste decides to set a trap? What Jefferson is saying makes sense, Captain. I happen to live through Apache Pass when, shall we say, a whole regiment rode. You'll wait for us here, Captain. Yes, sir. This way, General. Cochise is expecting us. Messages all over the sky. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Have you ever scattered the way to Cochise Stronghold? Yes, sir. Back in 61, during the truce period. 
Good. Cochise, my heart is lightened by your arrival. Cochise, this is General Howard. I'm glad to be here. We will talk. Come. Three days passed while we waited for all the council members to arrive. Meantime, Cochise dug into every channel of General Howard's mind and found the answer satisfactory. He found another white man he thought he could trust. Until... Cochise! I think it's going very well, Jeffers. Remarkable man, Cochise. You mean for an Indian? I wouldn't care what the color of his skin is. Your brothers come. Is this how you speak from the heart? Carstairs. Cochise, I don't believe in excuses. But surely the great Chiricahua chief has young men who are concerned for his welfare. What say you, my brother? The general speaks with straight tongue. I myself heard him give the order for the troops to stay behind. If blood is spilled, it will not end there. And the chance for peace is lost. Will you come with me, Jeffords? Let's go, General. There's one now. Mister! Hold it. Mister, don't you obey orders? But, sir, I thought... Put those rifles down now. Jeffers, who gave you the right to issue orders to my men? Maybe his common sense did. Now you get these men back out of here where they're supposed to be. I was thinking of your welfare, sir, when I decided to ride in. Commendable, Captain, I'm sure. It may interest you to know that it could have blown our peace hopes to high heaven. I'm supposed to be in here alone. But, sir, after three days, I thought that... Captain, this war's been going on for years now. I'll stay here for six months if I can stop it. Safe or not safe? Is that clear? Yes, sir. How long am I to wait, sir? Take your men back to Tucson immediately. Move out, Sergeant. I'm sorry, sir. You might have been a lot sorrier, Captain. been said, if a big wind comes, a tree must bend or be torn out by its roots. Where will we get blankets, corn, and horses if we do not take them, as we always have? It is the Apache way. The American government will give us cattle. We will raise them and trade them. 
The answer of a woman. It is not the Apache way to be grandmothers to cattle. Cochise throws away our victories. We need a new chief. Now I say this. The Americans keep cattle, but they are not soft or weak. It is not our victories I throw away. What I throw away is the hatred without end. If some white man wants yellow iron and comes into our mountains, can we kill him? Such a man should be turned over to our military authorities. He'll be judged and punished. Suppose he kills one of my men. If a white man kills an Indian, we'll hang him. It is not easy to change, but we must. The Americans grow stronger, we grow weaker. I wish to try this new peace. Those of you who stay with me must keep my word. Let all others walk away. If more walk away than stay, I am no longer your chief. I walk away. A motor. I walk away. Who else comes? Who else? women, your children, your weapons. Leave this territory. I leave you my name also. Now I am ashamed of being Chiricahua. I take name Mexican enemies have given me. The whites will learn it. From now on, I am Geronimo. If Geronimo or his followers come back to this territory, let them come with weapons. I break the arrow. <laughs> 